What is going on my friends? I am Pixel Dan and I am here at Retro Toy Con in Greenville, South Carolina. This is my second time appearing at this convention. I had a blast when I was here last time. Look how busy Steena is back here. She's so busy right now. <laughs> So this is like the preview night event. It's like a VIP thing, so it's very low key, but we just got in here. We got the table all set up. Look at this, look at this sweet banner they made for me. Uh, and I actually have the books here. A lot more books for sale this time. Didn't have any shipping mishaps like I did at Retro World Expo, so fingers crossed things are good and smooth this weekend. We have some book sales. We meet a lot of cool people. I'm very much looking forward to the weekend, and of course, we're gonna do some toy hunting while I'm here, so let's, uh, we might walk the floor tonight. It's, it's preview night. I want to kind of hang around the table for a little bit, but if I get a chance to walk around, I will definitely take you guys with me, but regardless, when I hit this show floor, you'll come with me and we'll see what toys we can find at Retro Toy Con. All right, so I'm sitting here on preview night and it's been really cool. Like, I've already sold through a few books, I've met some great people, but I wanted to tell a story and give a shout out to a very enthusiastic young fan named Austin. He came by the table and he was clutching his copy of the book in his arms and his dad was telling me that Austin reads the book every night, they go through through it together, they read pages before bedtime, that he's become a huge fan because of the book. He's got like a whole Christmas list of things he wants because of the book. Um, and you know, he brought me this mosquito card back and asked me to sign it. And of course, I signed it of course, and the book for him. And it was just an amazing experience. And you know, like, while I was working on this book, like I, I knew it was something that I had always wanted, right? I had always wanted a collection of everything that had come out for He-Man, and I knew that it was gonna be something, or well, I was hoping that it would be something that collectors would enjoy. I never even imagined that this would be something interesting to kids, and yet, since I've started doing shows again, I have met at least one excited kid at every one of these shows whose parents tell me that they adore this book. And that is like one of the highest compliments that I feel like I could have gotten on this. So, Austin, thank you. The weekend hasn't even started yet, and I feel like I could pack up and go home and be happy. You made my weekend, dude. All right. So preview night is actually almost over at this point, and it's been awesome. We've been selling books already and meeting a lot of people, but I figured before the night ends, I want to do a quick walk around the show floor. I'm sure we'll be walking around all weekend, but let's go ahead and take a peek. Let's see if we can find some things tonight. You want to spend some money? Stina's over here like, I want to spend all, my, all the money. So all I'm like, okay, money. okay, fine, Stina, we'll go buy things, jeez. Give me money. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how that works, yeah. This is awesome too. It's 90s Stretch Armstrong. I had the big one of that, the actual big like, Stretch Armstrong from the 90s. That's the way he looked with the weird giant smile on his face. That's pretty cool. Blurp balls. That's pretty cool. They retch it, you catch it. <laughs> You can't keep a good man down, according to T-Retch. And he should know he's upchucked enough cave dwellers to fill a tar pit. What an amazing description. <laughs> hey Vern, it's Ernest. Look at that. I, didn't, I like, I never see this. That's cool. Like I see Pee Wee all the time, but you don't ever see Ernest. So these are both pretty awesome. Uh, these are like brand new unused sticker books for the old Panini stickers. These are the ones where you would buy the sticker packs and then you would put the stickers throughout the book and complete them. There's one here for He-Man and She-Ra and they're both like totally unused. That is pretty cool. Oh my goodness. Is that one of the... Uh... 
These are some of those knockoffs or side lines from Masters that have gotten very, very pricey over the years. But the skeleton here specifically is amazing. I think it's like called Skull Force. Um, so this is this one right here specifically is from a line called Skull Force, and it's freaking amazing. <laughs> I mean, come on, skeleton dudes are always amazing. There's no price on this. I, it's probably going to be very expensive, but I need to ask about it just to know because that's amazing. It's a Golden Girl collector case. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that is really cool. I love collector cases. All right, so preview night is basically ending. Everybody's filing out of here. Um, so I've already made one kind of big purchase for the weekend, but I'm very happy to have this Skull Force figure to add to my collection. It is freaking amazing. Um, I think that's a good place to just call it right now. I don't need to be buying anything else. we got a whole weekend ahead of us still. So uh, I will see you guys back here in the morning for Saturday of Retro Toy Con. Ah! It's like Saturday afternoon now. Yeah. What the heck? It's been an amazing Saturday though. Like I've been at my table all day and we sold like every book that we brought with us. One left. It was insane. I mean it was just like the turnout was amazing and all the people we met were incredible and we just got done with my panel. So now I think I'm finally at a point where I can walk around the show floor and do some hunting. I hope there's toys left. You think they're all gone? Yes, you can't spend any more money. Oh, darn. <laughs> I'm sorry, I guess this is the end of the toy hunting video. <laughs> My wife just canceled it for the rest of the day. Sorry, the slaughter. I think we're going to Okay, I can spend a little bit. Ah! All right, let's see what we got in here. <gasps> Toidles. All kinds of baggy turtles in here. Hey, Scale Tail. Nice. There's a Rock and Roll Mondo Gecko. Ground Chuck, Rat King. There's Tattoo. Some Mikey's back there. Oh, sweet. Hey, here's a, here's a Next Mutation Mikey back here. That's a pretty rad one, actually. Five. I might grab that, actually. That's pretty sweet. Oh, and this too? Hmm. Oh, this is pretty sweet. Some vintage carded Mad Balls figures here. So what do we got? Ooh, check it out. Snake bait. Yeah, look at that. And then we've also got Bruce Brother up here. Those are really cool. So it's 100 and 120 for these guys. So pretty cool. I don't see carded Mad Balls very often. Not vintage ones, at least. Oh, hey, some cool stuff up here. Some biker mice from Mars. Wow, there's several of them up here. The whole row of biker mice. That's sweet. Hey, there's my boy Mosquito. 60? That's actually pretty good. No gun, but the gun's always hard to find for him. Gwildor. The clamp champ who has seen better days. Sarad's back there, 75 on Sarad. Rattler. That's a redneck Rattler. 60, that's why he's 60. Redneck Rattler in there. Sweet. Captain Planet, he's our hero. Gonna take pollution down to zero. 
I had this Wheeler as a kid though. I friggin' loved it. I loved it. Fire! Mm, gargoyle. Some Ghostbusters, real Ghostbusters. There's a lion back there. And Lucy. Bunch of carded turtles up here. These are nice cards too. Look at a lot of these are unpunched. Usagi, Scumbug, he's a hundred. Skateboard Mike, Pizza Face, Panda Con, that's awesome. Head dropping Leo. Ooh, Toon Shredder. Wow, that's awesome. Couple others back here too. Wing Nut. Looks like it. Set. Yep, there you go. Ten back shredder. That's nice. Oh, baby, this booth. This is Eternia Dreams. Love these guys. Oh, they got some good stuff here. It's Frankenstein Mikey. 35? That's not too bad. No weapons, but still, that's. Those monster turtles are so cool. Troll turtles back here. Ooh, that is a good one. $40 for Navy Seal Mike back there. There's a hothead back here. What's the price on hothead? 60 on hothead. Let's see him there. That's a good one. Ooh, baby, we got lots of masters over here. Look at all these. We got a, oh yeah. So a lot of the stuff I think we saw back at PowerCon, because they were set up at PowerCon, it's always just so amazing to see a lot of these vintage box items. Look at this. Oh my gosh. The Starburst Shira and Crystal Swift win. It's $1,200. But it is gorgeous. Ah, it's so cool. And we've got a boxed era. We've got the Butterflyer and the Sea Harp up here. What are these? Slippers. Oh, slippers. Oh my God. I feel like I need these slippers. These are incredible. <laughs> oh my, here's a vintage Natasa. What is she at? 250. Yeah, that's one of the one of the harder ones to get. I, I do not have a open Natasa, but I think I have a carded Natasa at home, crazy enough, that I got years ago. And she's one of those figures that has always just skyrocketed in price over time. Oh, what is this? Let's see, does it say on the back? Butterfly Woman. That's only 15. I actually have a carded Butterfly Woman figure at home, but not this character. That is pretty sweet. So this is great. This is totally one of the fantastic fashions. Yep, so it's She-Ra, but she's wearing one of the fantastic fashions. 16 for that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh my goodness, there is so much of like the Remco's and the other knockoff 5.5's down here. This guy's rad, look at him. The best part is that they know exactly what these are, and I, like I, I've mentioned, I'm trying to learn these better. So this is uh, from Soma Toys. It's a very cool looking figure here. What else we got back here? There's just an Origins Battle Armor He-Man chilling back there in the back. Some Remco's. Oh, this guy, this guy is awesome. Holy moly, look at this, look at the head sculpt on this thing. Mace Ape from Galaxy Fighters. Wow, I love it. Oh, snap. Here's a Warrior Beast. 70 on that one. That's the yellow and green gecko. Mmm, I think that's another one that I need. This appears to just be a wacky custom. Oh, this guy, I love this guy. I've got a couple of him at home. This weird, like, onion headed luchador guy. Way Out Wrestlers. <laughs> That's what the name of it is, apparently. Crazy. Oh, hey, here we go. Wasn't I just trying to figure out what these guys were called? Oh, well, they must not know because there's actually no name on the back. Look at that sweet makeup, though. Oh, this Green Dragon guy's pretty great. He's another Soma. Soma figure. Let's see if I get a better shot of him. 
Yeah, that, look at that. That is so cool. These are great. It's another warrior beast back there. I love him. I've got him at home. That's a good one. There's a bunch of Masters of the Universe classics here too. And including like the Super 7 Ultimate ones. Just curious, what are these going for now? Oh my goodness, $300 for Faker. Filmation Skeletor is at $200. I mean, I mean, that's what, these have all been going up and up and up, it's crazy. So 125 for Moss Man. Oh, here we go, God Skeletor, 145. It's crazy, I've just been watching these prices climb. 145 for Roboto. Loose, oh here's Shadow Weaver. 160 for a loose Shadow Weaver. And here's a bunch of vintage too. Oh, this poor broken Scare Glow. What does broken Scare Glow go for? 85 still, whoa. But then there's a really nice caped example next to him with the green halberd for 380. That scare glow just continues to get pricier and pricier. Atomic Ranger Warriors from Lannard. Oh, look at these. These are so cool. 14. Uh-oh. Those are pretty awesome. <laughs> Yo, the selection here at Eternia of Dreams, though, is really incredible. I mean, they have just got some stuff. And look, and look, I'm like browsing over all this G.I. Joe, and then my Pixel Dan brain goes, ooh, stone protectors on the card. Awesome. Actually, I'm curious, 35, not bad. All right, we'll come back over here and look at the G.I. Joes, right? Because I know you guys want to see them, especially the best G.I. Joes, the Shadow Ninjas on these super sweet bright pink card backs. Yeah, that's what G.I. Joe is all about, baby. Also, you guys know I'm totally just teasing you because people always give me a hard time about the brightly colored G.I. Joes. <laughs> I gotta show this off right here. So, Eternity of Dreams booth is really amazing. They gave me this awesome little 3D printed battle axe that has their initials on it. See, it's got the E-D in the blades of the axe and it's sized to fit your vintage He-Man figures or Origins or anything like that. I thought that was such a cool little thing and uh, it was so nice of them to give this to me so I definitely wanted to show that off. Hey, so there's some, uh, there's some Star Trek figures over here and uh, Lieutenant Thomas Riker is one that I don't have with the yellow shirt. I remember, I, I feel like this was definitely a harder one to get when it originally came out. It's only got a $6 price tag on it. I love this line. I might have to look through here see if there's anything else I don't have at home with my Star Trek collection. Eternity of Dreams always has amazing stuff and there's just this whole rack of vintage carded Motu figures, but man, let me show you what is drawing my eye right now. It is this right here. Blue Beard Stratos. Uh, this is one of the really rare variations that I do not own that I would love to own, but I probably won't be owning it today. I am willing to bet, there's no tag on this. I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. But that is a beauty right there. See, normally the beard is gray, just like his body. That's the common one. The blue beard one is like one of the earliest variations of Stratos and he's very, very obscure. So he's on my list, but I know it's gonna cost me. Hey, look at this, uh, some really fun stuff up here. First of all, uh, on card Remco, AWA, Animal and Hawk Road Warriors. Let me get closer up here for you. It's really amazing. And then we got this really dumb water pumper Hulk Hogan. I don't know if you've ever needed a Hulk Hogan that spits water at you, dude. Uh, I guess you got that right there. Okay, so Christina just pointed something out to me and I realized I might have gotten myself into a deeper hole than I, I realized when I, at that last show, I bought that boxed gray skull and snake mountain and slime pit and we had already been looking at a fright zone at toy federation recently but then christina goes oh what about those and she points out to me the boxed crystal castle and the boxed starship eternia oh no <laughs> 
I am not doing this today, guys, but um, maybe this is things for the future. Is that good enough of a like cliffhanger to keep you guys watching these toy hunts? Maybe one day Dan will lose his mind and buy more giant box masters play sets. You already have lots of your That's what we did. <laughs> So I went ahead and asked just because I wanted to know. I wanted a gauge. And uh, Crystal Castle is around the $400 mark. And Starship Eternia is around the $400 mark. So honestly, that's about in line with what I've been seeing for most of the boxed play sets. But then, look at what's on the other side over here. Hold on. Amazingly, he also has a boxed Nordor play set up there. And there's Slime Pit, but we've already knocked this one off the list. But boxed Nordor is up there as well. Now this one is sealed. It's never been open. So it's actually much higher. This one he's got in the $2,000 price point right now. Woof! But holy cow, I can't believe that now all of a sudden I'm just seeing all these sealed uh, He-Man play sets. What have I gotten myself into? Something you love. That's true. So I want to show you guys, there is a complete Eternia up here. 2000. Fully complete. Looks like the monorail tracks, they're not all connected together, but it does look like everything is up there. So it's really cool. I always love seeing it, but look at this. How cool is this He-Man Target set. It's one of those old like Velcro balls. There was a lot of those back in like the 80s and early 90s. The Velcro balls that stick to the targets and stuff. I don't think I've ever seen this before. I love the, this ball is just right on. He-Man's face is the bullseye. That thing is so cool. It's a whole bag of army ants? Oh, that's awesome. 60 bucks, take home the whole bag. We got Skeletor. Couple of He-Mans down here. Oh, I always love, always love finding these beasts. These are the, one of the Imperial ones, I think. But they work so well as like ride-ons, especially for like all the knockoff five and a half inch guys. So cool. With oh, a jumbo collector case, nice. Uh, it's from the Team and T movie. So this is like from the T 2006 Team and T movie. So you can kind of see that's the design of the turtle in there. Mm -hmm. But he's in like a mech suit. This is really cool. There's his weapon down there. So the figure's smaller than like a standard figure. He's at like uh, two inches, maybe three inches tall. And then he's in like this crazy mech suit. That is really cool, actually. I like that. Right behind Kingpin here. Here's like a, one of the cool, I think it's one of the Paleo Patrol vehicles. It's like a big old weird bone spider vehicle thing that Donatello's driving. It's got a $50 tag on it. That thing is really cool, though. Look at that. Hiya, pal! Oh! Oh! I'm so tired! Oh! It's been a hard day! Oh! Oh! Oh, yeah, I love, I love these bootleg turtles here. Look at this, a whole pack of them. They're all wearing, like, karate geese. They're unarticulated, but they've got like weapons and they got color-coded geese, except Donnie's wearing a white one for some reason. I don't know. Those are just so cool. Look at this. It's a, it's a boxed laser bolt, but it is in rough shape. Holy moly. Look at that thing all falling apart. Now, I mean, the good thing is that the vehicle inside is probably in great shape. It's never been played with. It's, it's brand new. And the box art at the top is still there. But the bottom of this thing has, woof, that thing has chewed up, man. Still 35 seems like a good price, at least just for the vehicle there. All right, so walking, it's ridiculous that this is the stuff that jumps out at me now, but like I'm walking by, and there's two Mechanics here side by side. So here, standard vintage Mechanic, you know, it's got that red armor that you know. Uh, I checked country of origin on this one is Malaysia, but the one next to it stands out. You can see that the armor is much lighter on this one. Country of origin on this one is Mexico. And a lot of people kind of call this one Peach Armor Mechanic, and I don't have a Peach Armor Mechanic in my collection. So here I go again. I'm gonna add another variant to my Vintage Masters collection. It's never ending, guys. It's never ending. There's some pretty great turtles vehicles up here in the box. Look at that, we got a turtle copter, and we got a sewer sub. Very cool. So I walked by earlier, like going to my table and I saw something over here and I grabbed it and I was like, oh, 
and he's like, I'll hold it for you. So, so I'm back over here now to get, get what I wanted. Oh, check this out. So this is an early Target exclusive from when the original line was brand new. So it's a four pack with all four of the original Turtles. Special collector's four pack. Look at that beautiful box packaging there with the brick motif from the vintage line. Oh baby. And it's got 150 on it, but I don't know, we we can do better than that. We'll work out a We're gonna work out a deal. That's that's how you do things here, man. Right. Oh, I love it. I love it. Hey, so I also just found a variant of ground chuck. So if you guys don't know, like the normal one has got green hair on the top. In fact, here, there's one sitting over here somewhere. Yeah, so this version here, you can see he's got the green hair on top, and that's the version I have at home. So this is the variant here where the hair is just silver. It's the same color as the silver on the horn and the mechanical parts. Sometimes people call it green brain and silver brain, but it's supposed to be his hair on top. Uh, but I'm going to pick up this silver one as well because I do not have this one at home. Good morning. It is now Sunday morning at Retro Toy Con, and even though I don't have the camera running all the time, let me tell you, this event has been go, go, go. This is a very unique show in the way that when the show floor closes, this party does not stop. Last night, after the convention shut down, the lobby of the hotel turned into a second convention. Uh, they have a lobby swap where a bunch of vendors and other people come in and they just set up makeshift like tables filled with toys for sale or trade throughout the lobby of the hotel. It was incredible. And then beyond that, people also start doing room sales. So a lot of the vendors will set up stuff in their rooms. There's a board out here that tells you what rooms you can go to that has stuff. And man, it was just such a cool experience. Tina and I stayed up late last night. We were room trading, we were lobby trading, we were just looking at all the cool stuff. So I wanted to show you guys real quick some of the things that I picked up last night after hours of the convention while I was hitting up some of the room swapping I picked up some really great loose TMNT figures. So we've got ourselves some of the super mutants here. We got Donnie and Leo. No accessories, but man, in pretty great shape for what they are. Of course, got their masks on. They're always missing those masks. I got a silver of one of the Shogun Leonardo figures. We got the Calvary Leo just because I thought he's so fun looking. And we got a couple of the little buddy sidekicks as well. So really fun grab some extra things after hours and now we're here and it's sunday morning and it's always that chill moment of a convention like people really haven't started coming in yet the show floor is empty this might be a good time to really do another good walk through and see if there's anything else i can come across before i have to leave this afternoon to fly back home so let's do it guys let's take one last walk around retro toy con so i will say this is a very gi joe heavy show i know there's a lot of Joe fans in this area and it really shows with the product that you see at the shows but I think that's really cool yo is that like a, that's got to be a prototype of some sort right that's pretty sweet but you can see there's just this great wall of all these loose Joes here look at this bucket of weapons all these missiles and everything that's fantastic so many vehicles here we got all kinds of great merch for Joe. Like, oh, I love how they've even got a Street Fighter one in here. Lunch boxes, some box stuff up here at the top. Oh, hey, even the video games. This is a great game right here. Very good stuff. 
They even got Cobra Strike on the Atari. It's cool stuff here. Like I love, I love stuff like this. Just all this side merchandise. You guys know me, so it's cool to see it for even brands that I don't really collect for. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. We got the Ninja Force Ninja Lightning Cycle. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Yo, this is amazing. I don't ever see carded uh, Real Monsters toys. There's Crumb. I always loved Crumb. What a cool looking toy, too. Ickus is back here. And Oblina. Oh, Scarfer? What else do we got? A Cromble. Sproink and Croink and Werfel. Yeah, these are pretty rad. Mattel did these. I don't remember that. Oh, this is what started it all right here, guys. Spider Man Classics. Man, I was so into these. And this is what launched Marvel Legends. Pretty cool. We've got some Wheeled Warriors over here. Check it out. Look at that. This one's really cool. You can see there's a guy to figure in there. Lots of attachments on there. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> this is this is amazing. I got to show this off. This is the uh, Mr. Peanut Peanut Butter Maker. Look at this. I love that it says comes with loads of luscious peanuts. <laughs> you actually put. Yeah. Are the peanuts are still in there? Fresh. Oh yeah, we gotta use them. We gotta make some peanut butter. How much cranking of peanuts do you need to do to make enough peanut butter to even like have a proper sandwich? That's that's amazing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so we got a major Matt Mason space crawler up here, which is awesome. Always love seeing these. But right next to it, this is something very cool looking. It's a Mattel Strange Change toy featuring the Lost World. And essentially, you would have these crazy little cubes of plastic and you would put them in this machine that's like a hot plate and it gets really hot and it grows into a dinosaur toy. It's probably super unsafe by today's standards, but Holy moly, how cool is this? And I love the box. Look at the artwork on this thing. Look at this guy. This is so cool. This is something I actually want to like try out. I'd love to play with this. That is neat. Yo, yeah, look at this. Dino's over here finding He-Mans. These are some of the repaints from the end of the 2000 X line. Ram Man's down here. And, uh, oh, Stratos is down here. Sky Strike Stratos. Nice. Looks like those have got 30 on them. Oh, this is fun. Here's a Mighty Mutations Donatello. One hundo. It's Construction Mutation Donatello. It's a bunch of the uh, Bondi head flippers. Power Morphers. Green Man. Oh, yep, we got some villains too. I love the villains from the original Mighty Morphin line. We got a couple Blue Rangers and Green Rangers. Uh, one Black Ranger, one Red Ranger. 25 is not bad either. Oh, this is awesome. Microverse, micro play sets. It's the Metropolis play sets. These little micro play sets are so cool. It's like such a, a like a thing of the times. There were so many different micro play sets. They're awesome. Hey, Stina. Please. Oh, check it. It's Punky Brewster. That's pretty sweet. Secret Squirrel. Here's some of the Toy Island Robocop figures. This is uh, with Flight Pack. Whoosh. And this one is uh, the charging repair station. Beat Buzz. Whirr. And Stina has her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's me. I'm, a, I'm the best of the toys. Look at me. Look at my muscles. Look at how buff I am. I'm not at all weird looking. I'm the best of the toys. You should buy me. Buy me now. There's a bunch of carded new adventures figures down here. Hoove. Oh, and that's their foreign ones too, because they're calling him Icarius instead of Flipshot. 
There's Nocturna, Karate, and, oh, let's get the focus. And Lizor. Lizor's great. Oh, yeah, see, they also have the stickers that says Nuevos. Ooh, there's a lot of. Oh, hey, whoa, that's a big one. Atom Bomb. There's a new Adventurous Power Sword in the box. Looks like 175. It's open, but it says works and complete. Got an Inhumanoids vehicle back there. We got Baron Zemo on the card. There's a couple of, a couple of carded turtles. There's Donnie. Sagittar. Got Jim Lee Mikey down here. Godzilla Wars. These are so neat. It's more of these like micro play sets. They're for Independence Day though. But look at these. Those are really cool. This is awesome. This is amazing. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Uh, this is from the very first Buried Alive match, I believe. Or at least the, it was the Undertaker Mankind Buried Alive match where Executioner came out at the end and helped Mankind win. Man, it's amazing that that memory is still so strong in my head. But I didn't even realize they made an Executioner figure. That is hilarious. This is an amazing four pack. What is this? It's $80, whatever it is, but I have no idea what this is from, but it's really cool looking. I have no idea. Does anybody know what this is? Because that is, it looks like it opens up. Okay, let me see if I can kind of crack this open. Is it Casper? No, is it? What is it? No, it is. It, it is, is Casper. Casper. It is Casper. I, the floor made me think of it, and then there's like the, the toy train. room up here, yeah. the train. That is amazing. Oh, wow. That is cool. I had no idea they made a toy of the house. Ooh. It's a pizza katana. <laughs> That's cool. This is awesome. A Mattel Electronics Dungeons and Dragons LCD game. I had no idea that existed. There's a couple different ones up here. This was a Radio Shack dinosaur game. Space Challenge, a racing game. Pretty cool. And a bunch of carded toriddles. What a rush. They're all here. They're all here. Skeletor and She-Ra and the Sorceress and Catra and Adam and Orko and Glimmer and, and Superman's back there. Yeah, <laughs> Superman's here. He's crossover. He's crossover, yeah. He's got to fight He-Man. Holy cow, welcome everybody. This is an unexpected surprise. <laughs> You guys look amazing. So these were just brought over to my table to look at. These were picked up here at the show, and I just thought it was so cool. I've talked about Ring Raiders before, which are like these awesome like airplanes uh, that are on little rings that you put on your finger. I had some of these when I was younger. I've seen them at shows here and there. Uh, some of these are really cool, by the way. I love the designs on these. But what I didn't realize uh, is that they had play sets for these. And, uh, he's the guy that bought them. He told me that there's actually four different play sets, but these are the two smaller ones And it's really cool like you actually attach the rings to these little these little like kind of nubs here these pegs on the play set Look at that and then it's like the airplanes are like docked. They're like parked outside of this like runway here These are very very cool. Oh, and you can actually connect them together. Is that what this is? They do connect together. Uh, let's see. That is really cool. Oh, oh, yeah that is awesome. These are really, really neat. So just something cool. I thought it was uh, would be something worth. Oh, and look at that. There's an extra bridge piece there that connects them. Bridge piece here. Wow, that is. This is really cool. Just neat things. Matchbox, yeah. Matchbox. Well, thanks for uh, letting me show these off, man. I always love finding cool stuff like this. Yeah. These are great. And you know, I wanted to do something that had a wide appeal. So I figured, like, you know, you can pretty much put anybody in a back alley. Definitely. So, yeah. I was shooting a Batman in there last week, and I love Spider-Man. The turtles work in there as well. Daredevil. Yeah. It's, they're magnetized. Um, so there's magnets in the bottom 
and in the side, uh, in the side, so that you don't have to keep this displayed all the time if you don't have room, because a lot of us don't, you know. Sure. Um, yeah. And then this, unfortunately, this did go out on me, but it has like watch batteries. It's just a balloon light that you can get. Um, so you can turn that on when it's actually working, and then the for the windows. There's backlight capability if you put a LED behind these. Oh, make cool. Make it look like there is lights on. Oh, yeah, there. look at that. And then it really helps. I'm not that good at lighting photography scenes, so it really helps with that because it kind of almost uh, diffuses it a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you're doing like a nighttime scene. That is really cool. So, it, yeah, it's, it's something that whenever I make these, I try to... I try to make them for someone who's just going to use it as a display piece, but also for someone who wants to do photography. Um, so another thing I could show you too, Dan, is that yeah. since it's magnetized, if these guys, if I, it's not going to make sense uh, from a scene standpoint, but if I, if I put this here, and you were shooting from over here, and then we took one of those red backdrops that I have. Oh, and yeah. And all of a sudden you have like your silhouette horizon line over here. You can get some good depth if you move it back. Look um, at that, how cool and, is that? And so he had some really cool setups uh, where he had some buildings I think he bought that were almost like from like sticker, like vinyl stickers. And so I saw that and I was like, I, I bet you I could design something and get it printed. Because this is foam core and it's waterproof. So that if this gets wet, it just beads up and it doesn't ruin it. Oh, that's nice. Um, but you know, the only problem with these is I sell these on my website and uh, they're $40 plus shipping, but the shipping is like. Shipping, yeah, because of the and size. I yeah. Had UPS and USPS crack these on me. I gotta replace it or report you put that back. And so that that can be somewhat of a headache. But ultimately, like I have a day version too, I just don't have it with me. Yeah. I just wanna give people another way to enjoy like the, all of these toys we love so much. Of course. You know, man. I think they deserve to be in a world that makes sense for them. That is That's so cool. Very cool. And this is just so you guys know, this is Vasco Toys. Let me get a good shot here too so you can catch them. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you guys are on YouTube now yeah. too, right? Yep, just so. not on the card yet. But you guys definitely need to check these out because these are incredibly cool backdrop displays. Yo, so check out these sweet little buttons. These are awesome. I want to give a shout out to the awesome people over at Action Toys and Collectibles. They, uh, they hooked me up with these awesome little buttons that they made. They said they had a bunch of beat up old magazines and stuff like that obviously this is like a scare glow from the old mini comic and then like Mega Man and uh, Scrooge from Nintendo powers I don't know they are very very cool definitely something I can uh, you know swag out my book bag and stuff for conventions so really cool stuff just wanted to show those off what is that so this is awesome to see this is from power lords and I I don't know if I've ever actually seen one of these in person. It's such a weird toy because it really doesn't fit in with the rest of the line. It looks so out of place because it's got like a big tank body. Look at these big skull missiles on here. There's another one that's like a human looking one that totally looks like a He-Man. It looks like He-Man's body sitting up there on a tank. Uh, but this is really cool. $400 price tag, but I totally get it. It's a weird, obscure piece. Man, that is so cool. Come on, skull missiles? Come on, that's amazing. The Shadow Strikers Typhoon Racer. Shadow Strikers is a really cool line, and I don't run into a lot of those very often. I don't think I've ever seen this one before. With Lance Heston. That's a cool line. It's neat because they just, the gimmick is that everything's translucent and see-through and of course that's totally my sort of thing, so that is awesome. Skull Fighters, this was definitely like a dollar store toy thing, but it's clearly like a knockoff of Skeleton Warriors, like this almost even looks like Dr. Cyborg. <laughs> wow! These are really cool, see there's nothing on the back. But look at this artwork, it's so rad. Holy moly, that is cool. Here, and this caught my eye. This is a bootleg Rambo from Mexico. But he's got like this shiny pink 
hoodie and everything on. It is absolutely amazing. I love this thing. Look at all the flashing, the plastic flashing on the hands. Like, it's just not... Man, that is awesome. The, the, the metallic pink is what makes this. I mean, come on. That is beautiful. <laughs> this is a beautiful piece. So I just want to show, like, obviously he's amazing, but there's so many cool bootlegs from Mexico down here. Like, we got some bootleg biker mice from Mars in here, which is amazing. I don't think I've ever seen these before. And some of those... Bootleg Motus. I've seen these a couple times. I actually just bought one of these down in Texas. Some turtles. Uh, Planet of the Apes, including a... <laughs> it's a Cylon body from Battlestar Galacta Galactica with a Planet of the Apes head. There's like <laughs> just a non-articulated Vader, which is amazing. So really fun stuff. And then this over here is a Lenny Letty Batmobile. How amazing is that? I mean, it's like blow mold. But that is wild. That is so cool. The Dune Spy Scout vehicle. And look, there's a bunch of Dune figures down here too. I now have to say, look, Pat the Aeneas Punk. These things are everywhere. He flipped out about this at Retro World Expo, and now I've seen it three times since. It's weird how that works. Come get it, Pat. <laughs> so I was over here looking at these the other day, and... I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of into this next mutation Mikey. This is a sewer thrash in Mikey. I had to look him up to know what he was. Um, he's supposed to have a skateboard, I believe, but still $5. I mean, it's a fun figure, right? He's got his Hawaiian shirt on. It's real wacky. I know next mutation isn't exactly the most beloved, but you know, always into the different toys. Another next mutation figure up here is this guy. This is, we looked at him the other day too. That's the rank warrior. It's got his accessories in there. Um, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab these just because I don't ever see these. And always trying to build up the Turtles collection as well. So we are going to grab these. And these might be about it for the weekend. But, hey, it's been a pretty good weekend. And this is a, this is a fun, just small thing to end things on here. We're at the very end of this show, right? Everything's kind of starting to pack up. We're winding down. Stina and I need to get to the airport here soon to fly all the way home. As we're leaving, Stina goes, hey, look, they're still here. She points, she's pointing over the Crystal Castle and Starship Eternity up there. Oh, if only, if only. But I, I, I hope it's not gonna be anticlimactic for you guys, but I'm not doing it this time, okay? I can't every single time I do one of these toy hunts walk out of here with a stack of three giant He-Man play sets, but maybe I have something to set goals for, right? Maybe now this is what we build to in the next several toy hunting videos throughout the next year, right? We build up to things like the Crystal Castle, the Fright Zone. I guess I have, I don't know, I guess I'm the guy that buys the giant box play sets now. <laughs> 
it's ridiculous. But look, guys, this has been an amazing, amazing convention. If you are ever in the area around this time of year in Greenville, South Carolina, I would definitely urge you guys to check out Retro Toy Con. This is one of the cooler toy conventions that I've been to. It's nothing but toy vendors. And like I said, it's like a nonstop thing. You know, in the evenings, they do it in the lobby. There's the room swaps. I mean, there is so much exciting stuff going on here. And if you are a collector of anything, you should find something here. I gotta give a shout out to the folks at Retro Toy Con for bringing me out. It's been an amazing weekend. Shout out to every single person that I met this weekend and to you at home for watching. I appreciate you all so much and stay tuned because even though we're getting towards the end of the year, we will definitely be coming back for more toy hunting with Pixel Dan. Until next time, my friends.